Hey, I'm Brad Kellogg. I'm an independent contractor who works with a bunch of different great companies around the country and world, deploying lasers and helping to meet clients' needs. This is the Elenium Project, the Trilogy Project. It started right after COVID ended. It was one of the first concerts to get going, and the very first concert to happen at Legion Stadium. This is back before I was a part of it, but it's grown into something new. It's got the same feel, but this time we decided to add a ton more lasers. The laser can exist anywhere. It's pretty lightweight for a light, and the impact is just, is just second to none. We've got lasers pretty much everywhere. Down here in these pods, we've got a couple of them going down on the sides, straight out gives 180 degrees of coverage, and we have six of these pods. Each section gets their own pod sideways. The back section, everything kind of piles up. So if you want, you can get like a whole bunch of beams out there. Recently, I started using a new laser by Kwan, the Atom 42. It's got a unique case with a whole bunch of nice handholds and a much lighter weight new process that allowed them to pack in more wattage per pound, which for me, when I've got to help put these up, Every pound counts, but in this case, we get a lighter laser than the old standard Spectrum 30 and a much nicer package. These are a pleasure to hang, to tech, and they really punch perfectly. It's like the most balanced unit I've used so far, I think. It's just incredible. So up on stage, we started with some low to medium height Atom 42s. They're hung to make 16 wide total with a slightly staggered view. Each of these gets zoned to several different loges, enabling every single person in this audience to have lasers coming above them, below them, crossing up, crossing down. We get what looks like a four laser show for nearly 180 degrees. It's one of the benefits of having, having like 147 lasers on here, but it's, it's something that gets missed all too much in design. Putting lasers forward in design and being able to integrate well with lighting designers has let us get some better looks that, rather than just sparkling in lasers where you think you got a space on the font, you can think of it from an audience perspective to get a real laser show for everyone. And I'm sure a lot of people have, uh, have got a thought of lasers as somebody that comes into a show and they just do their own thing, they're hard to integrate with, but I really noticed the industry change even just over my short career to where there's enough experience out there that people can take into consideration what the other designers are thinking or what the other logistics needs are. So, you know, lighting all often help with, with hanging points or power. Lasers comes in sometimes as a specialist in networking. So we have such, uh, such precise needs to be able to meet the speeds and the, and the awesomeness of these projectors. We've also got some of Kvant's new beam brush 35 watt units. These units have a variable divergence on them, which means instead of a tight, lacy, thin beam, you can have these large glowing shapes that oscillate almost instantaneously. It looks like a video projector going, but it can make some, it can make some truly impactful, like very, traditional fixture light or traditional lighting fixture like looks. But my favorite piece up here is this. This is the prototype of the Kavant Epic 270 watt laser. It's a full water cooled remote chiller unit that can output a shockingly tight beam. When you take a look out into some of the termination points of far out stadiums, it can seem a challenge to do that even on lower wattage lights. We were really surprised to find that we were able to hit the limited terminations we had pretty much just as well as the other lasers that we have in the Kamant line out here. And I can't wait to see everybody's responses when we turn it on tomorrow night. <laughs> this is the punchiest look of all. These atoms, yoked up or even flat down, can get over a crowd nine or 10 feet away, even if you've got nearly even deck height with proper termination. And it's a sight to behold. It totally takes over the stage. These are actually powerful enough to compete with what most LED users are, are going for. It used to be we'd have to coordinate. Now we have the opportunity to work together and get looks that take, that take really precise colors that these are able to achieve and match them with the tones that, that, light, that the video designers are using. Actually, my favorite effect is one that, uh, that we use printing audio out from the video designer and putting it into cues for beyond so we can have concurrent color palettes that can be graded similar exist in the exact same time and space. You can have you can have video really run the colors, kind of like you'd use Madrix for pixel tubes. Right. 
flown is more Atom 42s. These units are all in a circle configuration with even spacing, yoked down at 19 degrees off of vertical to be aimed at the center of a pod with an artist who's performing in the middle. I've used the beam attenuation map to, to, give like a, to give a gradient off to the edges of that. So if there's any parts of shapes that I'm using that we're gonna get inside of his area, they just seem to drift and fade away. We got plenty of units flown up so high, and some of them I didn't even recognize when they got up there. Because we have the Club Max 6800, which is an ultra compact unit with great punch. When you get these throw distances, 60, 65 feet, it seems to have a much better impact on the audience. These are best used at longer distances, but with the right diopter, the right unit, and the right calibrations and operator, you can make these things work down to 20, 30 feet if you really want to. The limits of Beyond's ability to calculate laser shapes and, and achieve all the coordination between diodes and galvanometers means that there's a limit to what you can put on modern CPUs. And that limit I found to be something just shy of 40, which is also the license limit, but you'd never want to go more than that. You start to lose performance on it. So we've got five separate instances of Beyond running for different sections of the rig. They are all connected with Beyond Talk Server, which allows any kind of simple media input or scripted external commands to be sent across a network. And if you load up a concurrent workspace in each place, you're able to fire an entire 150 lasers with one push of a MIDI button. It's, uh, it's beautiful. Now, the one I missed out on in this one was I didn't give myself enough priority to really deep dive deep into lighting consoles, but with what simple explorations I've done with them, having the ability to send an ArtNet control to laser hardware and laser processors in remote locations gives you just the most beautiful coordinated like feel for a room ever. Where lighting designers are already doing that, I feel like they should be integrating lasers into it. It used to be a little more tough, but the modern fixture profiles that people have got and the knowledge or the wealth of knowledge base that's come out of YouTube era. There's good info out there, and there's more and more operators every day running the shows like it. I can't wait to meet the next one. Up here, we put together five different computers so we could have five people zoning the show. Sometimes you've got time limits and you've got to be really, really precise in these long throw shows, but these are five instances of uh, Beyond Advanced and Beyond Ultimate that are co-triggered and have timelines placed across all of them. So we just drop the timelines across each unit and they're triggered by ArtNet timecode, which comes from both an Ableton session and show control for when the DJ is taking control. Some server racks. We could uh, use some fiber on shows like this and uh, it's a great alternative to be able to, to having to run so much fiber up and down. It's a nice light medium, but especially important when you've got this many lasers to get the speeds right. So we're happy to be using some Luminex stuff here and there. And uh, a Kavant Eastop rack, which has become so valuable. It's got to stay safe, got to have a chain of physical control over them. And uh, it's a good feeling knowing that you're in control. But yeah, going to get to some zoning and uh, making the lasers that much more awesome for tomorrow. So, thanks for the interview. Thanks for Thanks for taking the time to come to the show. It's uh, it's always a pleasure to see the, the Penguin team out, and thanks so much. Appreciate it.